finished the Qaeda, that's when I got my teacher who I finished this with. So I switched from Hafiz al mm -hmm. to my teacher, Mufti Afsir. So then uh, this teacher, we first seen him, he was very kind, nice, he was like, oh, this is nice, man. He, he asked us to stand up. So then that lasted for like a week. <laughs> and then he was the harshest teacher that was in the his school. What caused him to change? I think he was just he was just new, so he was just trying to fill it out. And then once he got he got used to the scenery, he, he just went full force. Okay. So uh, one thing that I started doing, which helped me through my struggles, in the beginning it was really hard for me, like um, certain ayahs or certain surahs, it was really hard. And one thing I started doing, and which I continue to do throughout my hips, was I used to wake up for Tahajjud every single morning. So, as I became, you know, consistent with waking up for Tahajjud, I used to, uh, it became easier for me. One of the um, blessings that I've uh, been able to personally experience is when you wake up in the morning and it's like three or four in the morning and you hear something that sounds like it's coming from paradise and you're waking up and it's like, am I in paradise? But it's, it's one of the children, one of the Hufal, they might be at three, four in the morning just revising their Quran Majeed. But it's so beautiful at that time of morning when there's it's complete uh, silence and you're just waking up and you're just hearing the Quran Majeed being recited. It's such a beautiful thing at 3, 4, 5 in the morning, you know, to hear it coming out of your sleep. It just gives uh, your soul a refresh and it inspires you to get up and pray and, uh, you know, get get ready for Fajr. So that's one, that's one personal thing I've experienced. Another thing I've experienced is like, when I pray behind my sons, I just get a coolness. Uh, it's like a coolness, like a, a calm, cool breeze that just like cools the soul. Just and it just makes you feel so good. Like the sakina, it's just like sakina. Just it's it's like really understood. You have the experiences. It's indescribable. You know that I notice that um, when I pray behind one of one of the hufal. I don't experience it when I pray behind all who file. It's just it's something that I do experience when I pray behind one of my sons. That I, I just, it's just like a certain coolness that just makes me feel so good. And it also um, there are times where it's also I can't contain it, and I'm I'm, uh, I'm in salat, and and then I might just break down crying when I reflect on some of the meanings that's being recited and uh, knowing the sacrifices that were put in, you know, just hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it and just try to uh, be thankful and grateful as much as you possibly can because it's a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that the Quran Majid can get away from you um, just as fast as, you know, a camel gets away from the rope that ties it. So there's a lot of pressure as far as how do you live your life like a normal person per se, and how do you maintain the Quran Majeed? What about the discipline? So I know in the beginning it's difficult. As you go along, what types of discipline do you develop or do you have to develop to really achieve uh, status of Hafiz? Uh, discipline is a very, very important thing uh, in becoming Hafiz and not only becoming Hafiz but 
just carrying on that, that lifestyle of a hafiz. You have to be very disciplined. And uh, alhamdulillah, um, my family, my abu, my ummi, um, I already was pretty disciplined young man at that time. So a lot of the things that the teachers would tell me became easy. So, you know, like one teacher, he used to always say that we were only allowed to sit in two positions. Two positions. Two positions, that's it. So it was on your knees or with one knee up, like when you're eating. That Did was he explain only why that? Did he explain about that those two positions? What's what was the significance of those two positions? Um, I think I can't remember exactly, but uh, I think he mentioned one was how you sit in salah, and then the other I can't really remember from. Uh, but yeah, sure. so he used to say that these were the only two positions that you could sit in. So. He used to sit across from the hall. And if he okay. see anybody change their position, we stand up. Stand up? Yes. You have to stand up. So did you find it, did you actually find it easier to do your hifth sitting in those two positions? No. It was hard. <laughs> because it was a very hard floor. So. You didn't have cushions or rugs or No, none of that. <laughs> So I used to um, try to, you know, get my way, you know, uh, cut the corners, I, I would say. Sure. And like lean over a little bit or try to hide my leg some type of way. Well, you have to figure out the best way for yeah. you to get through it, right? Yes. So it's even successful. Yes. When I went to Lahore, uh, when I was eight years old, somebody was doing hips. And I was like, okay, like we was friends. And I was like, okay, I want to do hips too. So I didn't know what hips was at that time, and um, I asked my parents, and they were like, uh, they, didn't, they didn't say anything. And then one time, like, I was still eight, and my parents was like, my umi was like, you're going to do hips. I didn't know what hips was, so we went to the store, got a holy Quran, went to the mudrissa, and it was like a school thing. I was doing school, but it was like a part-time hips thing, and um, I was doing hips for like about three months, three or six months, and... I was doing school, but I was just going to that madrasa as part-time. So um, I think I did like a couple of surahs. I did Nazar and I did a couple of surahs, and I said hips is in for me. We went back to uh, we went back to Rawalpindi, that's like here from Atlanta. And um, I uh, then like after that 10, 10, we went back to the madrasa. I just wanted to do hips again, and like, you know, so we went back to the madrasa, and we uh, I started doing hips again, and like I dropped out. I dropped out and I got started going to school, got back into hips again when I was 11, 11 years old. I was 11 years old and like, I think I did 10 jewels in around, I don't know, eight months. So it took me eight months to do 10 jewels and I kind of like, they were, they kind of got weak because I dropped out again. I just stopped studying. It was like, I didn't have intentions to do hips. It was because my parents wanted me to do it. So the intentions also help you to do hips a lot. And when I was like, then we moved to Lahore. It was, um, I think it was 2017, or in the, at the end of 2017, it was like September, October. In 2017, we moved to Lahore, and uh, I was about to start HIF. So, like, this is how I met my friend. His name is Hafiz Shafat. So, he started helping me. He, he's like, he's really, he's a good kid, and he's super, like, he's strong. What I mean by strong is, like, he bared a lot of things. He didn't live with his parents and stuff, and it was a lot. And his parents lived in another city, like, far away. So he started helping me, and I had uh, like I was I was gonna have my um, I was gonna go to my madrasa when I went to Lahore, and I was gonna start hips. I was actually st I was then I started hips because before that it was like school and like part time hips. So I was going to the madrasa. There was no school, and he helped me like throughout the stuff. Like he like you know um, uh, helped me meet other people and stuff. And um, the thing was. Uh, I was still like, I didn't have intentions. He became my best friend and I was doing it because he's doing it. So I was doing it and the uh, school made me restart hips. And when I restarted hips, they, uh, I did like the 10 juice that I already did. I did the 10 juice in around 18 months, 18 months. And um, it took me a long time. So 
that like I was about to start like my 11th or 12th juice, something like that. And my friend, Hafiz Shafat, he was excited that his uh, two brothers are coming from uh, his village. And I felt so happy for him because he hadn't seen them in a long time. So he was excited and he was telling everybody. And, uh, uh, and then I came out, uh, like I came outside and I see a, a whole bunch of people crying and I asked him what happened. And he said like, he didn't reply to me. So I asked my little brother and he told me his two brothers that were supposed to come passed away in a car, in a bike accident. I felt so bad. It like, I almost like, it felt so bad. Cause, and then like the next day I saw him, he was like, he was with my Qadi sub and he was like, he, he said he's going to go to the village and come back and restart his. And that motivated me. Like I said, okay, I'm done. Like he's my best friend. He has so much good intentions and stuff. So I went, I went, I went to Hazrat Mullah Shah's Darbar and like I said, okay, I'm making intention. Inshallah, I'm going to do hifs. So I did two, I did two pages that night. And after that, I just did two, three, four pages. And I did like 15 Jews in like seven months. And I had five Jews left. And I switched my madrasa again. I had five Jews left and I switched my madrasa. And the next day, Holy Quran is something that it's not supposed to be joked about. Like, even there, I learned so much lessons. Holy Quran, like, I, the next day, I did, like, almost a half a juice of sabak in one night. It was the fifth, uh, the fifth juice, and I did, like, half a juice. What and, did like, you call it? Well, muhsanat. The juice is called well, muhsanat. No, you, what did you call it, what you do when, you, when you're memorizing it? It's called sabak. Sabak. Yes. So I did almost a half a juice of sabak. At that time, I had five juice. Holy Quran, when you, like, and that was, like, seven months after, like, I had te I, I only had 20 Jews left seven months ago, and now I had only five. So in basically the amount of seven months, I did 15. And the two other Jews, I almost, the, the 10 Jews I did in like almost two years. So once I had pure intentions, I did it so fast. So I did like half a Jews in one night. I don't know how I did it. I don't even remember. So because I was reading it in the morning, I read it in the morning. And after like I came back from the madrasa, I just started reading it, reading it, reading it. And I just stayed up to like two. And I went, I fell asleep, and then I woke up after Fajr, and it was almost time for class. And I read the whole thing, and he was like, oh, "Okay, I, it's like I already knew a Jews that it was kind of weak, so I just did it." And my Qadi sub was like, "Okay, um, he." I was reading, and I did four four pages. Four pages is a lot, even for somebody who's about to become a hafiz. Like, so I was, I I did, and uh, half a Jews that contains ten pages. So I did four pages, and Qadi sub, I had like three mistakes and three is the maximum in that madrasa. That madrasa was strict. And I knew, he said, even though it was so much, even though it was not a, like a normal amount of sabak, it was three mistakes and I was like, Qadi Saab probably won't say anything because I'm doing so much. So Qadi Saab was like, how, how uh, you're doing, this is your sabki? I said, no. He said, what is this then? He was like, kind of like serious. I said, it's my, it's my sabak. And he said, go stand up. And like, I said, wow, wow, like four Jews and like, seriously, like, come on. Mm -hmm. So that's how, and now I realize like, Holy Quran is something that you have to be serious. Cause I, you know, even making mistakes in Tarawi, like sometimes you mess, mess up the words of Holy Quran. So that's why, even though I did four pages, I came back and I did the remaining six pages. And he said, you know why, why I, like I told you to go back because you were messing up the words of that. Like, you don't want to say like, uh, verily Allah Ta'ala loves the not disbelievers. So how long did it take you to come out? Um, I would say two, two and a half years. Is that the normal? Uh, it's pretty much period. the normal period. How many lines do you memorize in that? Um, it started out with like half page to one page a day. And then as I continued, uh, memorizing became very easy. And some days I used to memorize like five pages a day. Um, it just depended on the day and how much I was working. From the start, uh, it was very challenging. Because um, usually when I first started, I would just kind of hang with my brothers and they would handle everything and I will do a little bit and that would carry me the whole way. And uh, last year, I was able to lead with Prophet Sayyid Osman, and we did half and half, and you know, it was it was good the whole way. We handled each other, and we helped each other out. And starting this year, since uh, I had to do college courses, I had to find a masjid local, and this masjid, they didn't have anyone to leave. And so I was the only one, 
And starting out, it's been extremely difficult. Just coming from college, right after classes, just throwing on a thug or a kameez and trying to go and read and practice what I'm going to do for the night. And just going in, alhamdulillah, it's, I've been getting through it so far. It's been okay. But it's, it's definitely a diff difficult task. Um, so for, for Hafiz, for someone who's recently graduated in the Desha what would you say are some of the most important keys outside of Ramadan to retaining um, all of Holy Quran? I'd say that for someone to retain it even outside of Ramadan, you'd have to be careful of the circles you're in, who you keep around, what you do, what you're doing. And you have to always make sure that at least, even if, if it's just a little bit, just to recite some Holy Quran every day. And I think the most important thing is the conduct. Um, the way you carry, carry yourself. And when I was studying, I was told by my teacher that someone who reads Holy Quran or someone who holds Holy Quran in their heart, they can't, they can't be just any type of way. Because you're, you're holding the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. You have to keep it with your actions. And even with your tongue when you speak, it should be in a respectful manner. 